Welcome back. California becomes the first ever state to study and recommend reparations for black people. As the nation remembered the Tulsa massacre yesterday, the nine member task force appointed by California Governor Gavin Newsom held its very first meeting. Now, critics say California should not study reparations since the state didn't have any slaves. The state secretary of state, Shirley Weber, disagrees and highlights the importance that this work has and what they have to do in front of them. California has the ability and the power to do it. And if not us, then who? You're here today not just to seek an answer to say, was there harm? But your task is to determine the depth of the harm and the ways in which we are to repair that harm. Will this be the beginning of other states following suit, formalizing other reparations task forces? Will H.R. 40, the congressional bill that's 42 years in the making, finally pass through a gridlock Senate? These are questions that we want to know the answer to. And so I said, who better to ask than Reverend Mark Thompson? He is a member of the National African American Reparations Commission. Mark, good to see you. Good to see you too, brother. And congratulations on the show. Oh, thank you. Now, yesterday, during his speech, President Biden called Tulsa not a riot, but a massacre. He talked about how evil it was. He talked about the problems. He alluded to systemic issues. He did everything but apologize for it. Now, Mark, my sense is, unless we have that kind of a push, which starts with an official apology, we probably won't get reparations. Is, is, am, am I thinking about this wrong? Well, the fact of the matter is we are farther down the road to reparations than at any point we've ever been in history since Congressman Conyers first introduced the bill uh, in 1989. Right now, believe it or not, this very evening, there are 188 members of the House of Representatives who are co-sponsors for the reparations bill. That's approximately 30 short of passage. And when, as you know, Mark, whenever you have that many co-sponsors, there are also a number of people who are going to vote yes, even if they're not co-sponsors. You're right. The trouble will be in the Senate for all the obvious reasons that we all know ad nauseum. But that's where Joe Biden comes in. Um, we are going, if the doesn't get through, if it passes the House, the H.R. 40, the reparations bill, and doesn't pass the Senate, um, both uh, NARC, uh, an organization I'm a part of, and the Legacy Reparations Organization in COBRA uh, are going to appeal to President Biden, who said, we as black people had his back, and now it's time for him to have ours. Remember when he said that the night he won? Um, oh, yeah. We're going to implore him to establish what H.R. 40 calls for by executive order. And to, so everyone is clear, H.R. 40 calls for a commission to study reparations proposals, no longer to study whether there should be reparations, but rather what for, forms, now plural, what forms reparations could possibly take. And we want Biden to sign that executive order if the Cory Booker bill cannot pass the Senate. So let's start with President Biden, because, you know, this idea that we're going to push him is the right one. He certainly is only president because of black folk and reparations is a black folk issue. But Biden has very clearly stated all the progressive stuff he ain't with from Medicare for all to Green New Deals to defunding police. Uh, reparations is another thing that he in the past has said he's not down with. Do we have reason to believe that he can be moved on this? There's some conversations that are taking place. Uh, there have been some behind the scenes meetings. So we're at a, at a place of negotiation right now. You're right. There have been times when he hasn't been progressive, but he's also, quite frankly, surprised us on some other issues uh, since he's been in office. So we're going to we're going to be optimistic and, and hope for the surprise. But that notwithstanding, he would not be president if it were not for African-Americans. Let me say this as well. There there are a group of, of people, um, some affiliated with the Democratic Party, who are making the case behind the scenes, you know, in the smoke filled room, so to speak, don't pass reparations. That's the third real term like defund and it'll cost us the midterms. Uh, the midterms are over a year away. That's why it's time to do it now. Um, so there is that uh, uh, stream of thought that we're in competition with politically. There are those who would advise the White House and Congress not to do it. 
Um, but we think we can carry the day. So Biden won because of us, because of that moment of reckoning. And if it were to become the case that he would not support reparations, do the Democrats really want to risk disaffecting African-American voters who are already suffering from voter suppression and have us not to turn out in 2022 and lose the House and lose the Senate? If, you, if this bill is either passed or is made possible through executive order, it pretty much guarantees that the African-American, overwhelming African-American electorate support the Democratic Party enjoyed in 2020 will also be extended to 2022. So it's, it's very, be very intelligent and mathematically wise for them to support H.R. 40. So let's talk about some of those reparations proposals, because one of the conversations people are having in America is what does reparations look like? Is it just a check in the mail saying we're sorry about this whole slavery thing? Is it free school? Is it, you know, what, what does it look like? In your estimation, what are some possibilities for reparations? Well, in fairness, with a commission, everything would be on the table. Um, and so as one who has advocated for and lobbied for the bill, I've not advocate, advocated for any singular policy because I want people to know um, that this is, is this is still an open discussion. Nothing is off the table as of now until the commission is formed. But since you asked, uh, it can mean a number of things. And it should mean more than one thing. Um, like some people talk about a check, and that's appropriate. There sh that should be in there somewhere. But when the white middle class was built, Mark, they didn't just get a check in the mail. They were given all the other resources, too, the Homestead Act and fair housing and, and all of those things, the GI Bill, we did not get those things as African-Americans. And so we were not in the same uh, uh, in the same vein, given the opportunity to build a middle class. And to be clear, H.R. 40 not just uh, addresses the period of enslavement, but slavery and its vestiges, all of its evil offspring like Tulsa and Jim Crow and lynchings and voter suppression and today's police violence, mass incarceration, the war on drugs, the war on poverty, it can address all of those things because all of those things emanate from the enslavement experience. So when you look at that broad scope of slavery and vestiges, then it, make, it makes perfect sense for people to think about it in the context of it meaning more than one, just one proposal, more than just one answer. Because listen, man, I'll be honest with you. If Joe Biden said, I'm going to send all black people a check today for what happened during enslavement in a COVID economy, my brother, um, that's that's just going to go to the rent. And, and again, that's mm. that pays as much rent. We need long term investment and opportunity in our community for generations, not just one check cut for me to pay the Let's bills, see. hand to mouth in this COVID economy. So a check, potentially, legislation, potentially, structural investment, potentially, all these things sort of sort of mixed together. Uh, what do you say to the person, and I hear this every day, who says reparations is nothing more than taking money from people who were never slave owners and giving it to people who were never slaves? This ain't right. Reparations is investing money in those who are equal human beings to those who were and still are today the beneficiaries of slavery and its vestiges you may not have owned slaves but you are a beneficiary of the enslavement of our ancestors and a beneficiary of all the vestiges from jim crow on down you still enjoy the benefits both um, uh, with all the above class monetarily and otherwise from that period. So yes, uh, everyone is, is, this affects everyone. And if people really are about any type of racial reconciliation, healing, anything in this country, this country getting to a place of normalcy and peace, we've got to make everyone whole. And that includes African-Americans. And this is what has happened to us. As I said, it's no small thing that 188 members of Congress have co-sponsored this bill after what we just saw with George Floyd and everything. People are now, now years ago, yeah, you know, it was considered a, a sort of a fringe issue. Reparations uh, was the defund, so to speak, of the 90s. 
Um, <laughs> but reparations is mainstream now, y'all. And people are jumping uh, on board. I, I have, I've had Nancy, the likes of Nancy Pelosi on my own show uh, announcing her support for H.R. 40. And we commend Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee for all the work she's done. But we've got to get this done. This is an opportunity. This is a political opportunity. This is not an election year per se, a national election year. And so if this were coming up as it came up last year, people said it's too close to November. Uh, all right, all right. We had to bite that bullet. No excuse in 2021. Let's pass H.R. 40. H.R. 40 to the floor. That's it. That's it. There's always a reason to put back black people's issues to the back burner. There's always an election. There's always a, a piece of policy. There's always a condition. There's always a fight. There's always a reason to say just wait. But black folk can't keep waiting because we've been waiting for 400 years for this thing. Reverend Mark Thompson, thank you so much for joining me on Black News tonight. We'll be sure to have, we'll be sure to have you back soon. You my man, 100 grand, Mark. Keep up the great work. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's